All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're jumping into Photoshop to show you how you can create animated GIFs with fun little captions using just this program and the handy dandy video editing tools that come with it. So something I don't think a lot of people necessarily know about Photoshop is it actually comes with a dumbed down video editor built right into the software. This lets you do a couple of things. You can either edit regular video or you can create your very own keyframe animations where you make a bunch of layers, draw some stuff, and then move them all the pieces around layer by layer, frame by frame. So to get us started, we're gonna create a new project or a new document. I'm going to use something that's a standard size, like 1280 by 720. This is just a regular video size. When you're working with video, you typically want something that's called a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That's the size of the rectangle that you want to use when messing around with video, especially for the web. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Create. So normally when you open up Photoshop, you're going to be greeted with a screen that looks a little bit like this. You've got your tools on one side, your layer panels and all this other stuff on the other side but nothing here specifically looks like it was made for editing video. What you have to do is go up to the window button, go down to the bottom and find the window called timeline. Click on that and this should pop up at the bottom of your screen. This is where all of your clips will show up, all of your video tracks and your audio tracks so that you can edit them independently, move stuff around as if you were editing this in a more full fledged video editor like Premiere Pro. The default option that it gives you is to create a video timeline. This is the one that most people would be familiar with. And your other option is to create a keyframe animation. And this is something I'm going to wait off on and illustrate how to do in a different tutorial, just because these are different enough that I want to do one of them at a time. So to turn this whole thing into a video, all you have to do is click on create video timeline. And then you just start grabbing and dropping in your clips so that you can start to edit them. So the easiest way to do that is all Adobe products typically come with Adobe Bridge. And Adobe Bridge is nice because it lets you browse your files like you're using Windows File Explorer. And then you can just drag and drop them into your timeline and resize them as you please while holding shift, of course, so that you don't have to worry about it getting warped. And what I'm doing here is when I drag and drop it, it's doing a free transform. Normally you'd have to hit control T to bring this up. Holding shift, dragging the corner so that it stays the same uniform shape without warping. Then I'll click enter. I'll hit control A to select all, center it, and now I can start editing it. And if I wanted to upload like a video of this to YouTube, then it would already be the right aspect ratio ready to go. Unfortunately, the source material for this particular season of Futurama was of the old aspect ratio, so it's a little bit squished in, and I really don't want to mess around with these black bars. So I can either hit C to crop these out, or I could just go up to File, Open, and then I could just open this video in its own project and not worry about it. So you got some options there. Now, the next thing I want to do is I need to trim this down because I'm trying to add a caption at the end when the tall black Amazonian woman says it times snoo snoo. And so I got to get all the way back here. So, whoops. Behave yourself timeline. I got to go all the way to the back, all the way to the bottom of it and find the area that I want to trim out. So all the way back over here. And usually the way these timelines work, if you're not familiar with video editors, is you've got this little previewer. This is your little, tells you where you are in the clip. It's your little scrubber. And it allows you to preview each one of these frames. And you can even just hit spacebar to play the whole thing and look to where you want to make your edits. So I'm looking for when this woman, they zoom in on this black Amazonian woman right here. And she says, it times snoo snoo. So I'm going to put it time snoo snoo on the screen to punctuate what she's saying. And I need to trim that because look at all this other stuff I've got back here. All this other stuff. In fact, let me zoom in a little bit with this slider here at the bottom. 
all this extra junk over here. I don't I don't need any of that. That is all just excess nonsense. So I want to trim this down. It'll make our GIF a lot easier to work with. So there's two options to trim a video. You can either grab it from the end and pull it all the way over here, like you're shortening a piece of dough while you're making bread at home, and then it's trimmed up. Or, if I hit Control z to undo that, I can hit this scissor button to split these into two separate clips and then just delete the one I'm not using. So now she'll say, it times snoo snoo. But I think I trimmed off a little too much there. That looks about right. It times snoo snoo. Then I'll just drag that so that it's sitting nicely at the front of our video clip. So there isn't like a black gap of empty space when we play the GIF. And now I need to start adding stuff. So this used to be a little easier. I guess they changed things. Uh, you got to start by adding a new video group. I'm going to add one for each one of the labels that I want to add, which will be four of them. So these are layers. Just consider video groups video layers where you can animate them, adjust them, tweak them to your heart's content. And then this will just be our base layer. It times snoo snoo. And we're going to go down to video group one. We're going to go over to our layers panel. In fact, I'm going to bring this over a little closer so it's easier for us to see. And if you're not familiar with panels in Photoshop either, you can just click and drag these and put them literally wherever you want. So long as a little blue thingy pops up, it'll tell you where they're going to go. Which is kind of handy. And then you can resize them as much as you want, and you can even give the thumbnails a little bit larger. So inside of this video group one, this is just like a folder inside your layers panel. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to hit T for the text tool. Got my on ramp font that I like selected up here at the top. I'm going to go it. I'm going to hit control T to resize that a little bit. And I'm going to want to say time snoo snoo down at the bottom. So the easiest way to make sure that all your text is roughly the same size is you hit the alt key. You'll see that your mouse cursor turns into like a black mouse cursor and a white mouse cursor. This indicates that you're going to be copying whatever you're dragging. I'm going to click on the it and drag it over here. So that it's duplicated. At least it should be. Oh, it's it's hiding. We'll bring it up here and bring it over a little bit. That's why I couldn't see it, because I was previewing the start of this clip, and it was hiding over here somewhere. So now I'm going to say this is now time. And just drag it over a little bit. If you hold... You don't really need to hold anything in the newest version of Photoshop, but as you drag this around, you'll get these nice little pink slash purple guides that pop up and tell you if you're lined up with other text on the screen. I'm going to try and just line these up so they look good, and then I'll start to animate them. So I'm just going to continue to drag and drop these, and pulling them up into their own layers so it's easy to see them. We'll just say snoo and snoo. And the, the drag tool, the clicky tool, is actually just the V key. So you can click V or click this puppy dog over here with the move tool in order to click and drag stuff and move it around easier. You can even grab and hold H to get the hand tool, which will allow you to zoom and move around the image as well. And we're just going to align all this stuff so that I'm relatively happy with its alignment. And then I'll even make it smaller so that you can actually see everything. And typically with, with GIFs or memes like this, you want to make sure that everything is nicely aligned, roughly the same size. And we'll put it like in the middle. We could even move all these things together a little bit if we wanted to. Another thing you could do is you could make this the text look nice. You could make it like a big block of text. We could move it up into the corner like this. Yeah, I think that it's actually going to look really nice. You can basically do with this whatever you want. It's your GIF at home. I just like to, you know, have nice typography going on when at all possible. And if you want to select multiple things inside of your layers panel, it works just like inside of Windows. You hit control and you can select multiple layers. 
or you can hit shift and you can select all of these at once by clicking the top and the bottom layer and then it makes moving all this stuff around really easy. So next I want to punctuate all of this stuff by lining it up with this video. So I'm gonna make this video be very big and fill up the entirety of my timeline at the bottom. But first I'd really like to make it so that all of these clips are the exact same length as it, so that they don't get lost and get to be the wrong duration. Because if you got like one layer going all the way out to 10 minutes long, that means like a one minute video just became a 10 minute video of 10 minutes of empty space and dead silence. So you want to be careful. So now that everything's lined up, I can say where she starts to punctuate what she's saying. So she says, it, time, snoo, snoo. Okay, that's not bad. So it, time, so let's say it's right here. So we will have the first it appear right here by clicking and dragging so that it's over by where our little dragger is. And then we'll keep pulling this over until she says time. And we'll pull these over here and then I'll trim these up as I go to make it easier to control these. Just dragging them all along with me as I pull my slider over. So we're looking for snoo, and then snoo. So these will automatically just pop up now because they don't, they aren't visible until they show up on the timeline up here as we start to play this video. So let's play it. It times snoo snoo. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. And now we can basically export this. You can also import audio clips that you want to use by clicking on add audio and searching for it on your computer. You can add additional audio tracks if you want to mix like your voice together for narration with music. And those will just appear here and you just trim and edit them like you're messing around with these video clips up here. You can also do some animations by going down here. And we can say we want this snoo snoo to kind of jingle around as she says snoo snoo. So we'll say transform. And from here to here, it kind of like moves a little bit. And then it moves a little bit again. And basically what these stopwatches mean, you see these little things that kind of look like a stopwatch. A stopwatch means that those are actively being keyframed. And each one of these things down here is a keyframe that's been created. And the object is going to attempt to automatically animate between this one, this one, and then this one as it goes along based upon where I'm moving. And we'll get into more advanced like keyframe stuff later because there's a lot of crazy stuff that you can do with keyframes to make them interesting. You can also keyframe the opacity, the style, so you can add different effects to the text or your picture or whatever as you go along. And you can even warp the text to wiggle around and do stuff. So we'll see what this looks like now. So it times snoo snoo. That's actually kind of good. I kind of like that. It's kind of like, ooh, yeah, let's have some snoo snoo, yeah. And if you really don't want to keep any of that stuff, you can just go back to here, unclick this, and it'll automatically delete all those keyframes that you made so you don't have to worry about it. So now we want to export this outside of Photoshop and start to do stuff with it. So if I want to turn this into a video, I'll go up here to this gear at the top, was it the gear? No, it was over here, this little menu right here. I'm gonna want to export or render the video right here. So what is render video gonna do? It's going to bring up a little render video HUD and ask me where I wanna put this video. And I'm gonna tell it what I want for this video, if I'm gonna make a video, what I want for the format, what size I want it, what frame rate I want it, where I want to save it, what it's called. So we could call this the snoo snoo caption and i want this to be an mp4 video it'll also export a quicktime video which is the apple format or a dpx which i don't remember what that is off the top of my head i don't necessarily need this to be a particularly high quality and these presets are actually pretty good these are a lot like the presets that you get inside of premiere pro i would honestly probably do like an animation preset but i don't think they still have that preset in here that's a pretty old preset when i first used this particular technology 
I want something with not a crazy frame rate. Something lower like HD 7 or 20p 24. Let's just say low quality. Let's set the frame rate down to... I think the old animation frame rate that we used to use in school was 19. You could get away with like 24 if you wanted to. I think this is most likely at 30 FPS. So that's not bad. And the less frames that you have, the smaller the video is going to be, both in size and just overall complexity, which makes it easier to upload places without it lagging. And then we'll just leave it the size it is right now. I want all the frames that I created to be exported. I don't really need... Let's see, what kind of 3D? I didn't put any 3D in here, so this doesn't matter, but if you were doing 3D effects through Photoshop, you could change which one of these rendering qualities you use for the 3D effects. Interactive OpenGL is a pretty good one, though. And then I would probably just click Render, and it would export our little video. Where does it say where it renders these days? I think it just goes in the background. I guess it just was so small that it didn't even matter. Now the other option that we have is we can save this as an animated GIF, but you don't see that down here as an option, do you? That's because that's used through a different tool. You go up to File, and we're going to export this like we're doing this for web. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the old legacy save for web function because this has some pretty nice controls for augmenting our animated GIF. So I'm going to pull this out over here. So we're going to say GIF and somewhere down here it should say animated. So usually if you see this looping option down here it recognizes that it's animated. So what you can say is you can say this GIF will only play one time once it's loaded and then it will stop. You can also say that you want it to loop forever. I personally like my GIFs to loop forever. And then, oh, what kind of sharpening do we want? Usually it's like nearest neighbor is pretty basic and then by cubic sharper is like the fancy sharpening, but we want this to be like a medium amount of quality because we don't want this to have too much data and be too big of a GIF. And one of the biggest issues when you're exporting GIFs from Photoshop is going to be how long does it take for people to load it on their computer? How big is it? And are you maintaining some level of good quality? So one of the ways that you can just get rid of the issue of big fat GIF files is removing Dither. From what I remember, Dither tends to make your files bigger. So I tend to turn that off. We can limit the color palette to 64 colors, which is not great, as you can see, which is why I like this tool over other tools for exporting it, because you can actually see the effects that this is going to have on your image. So the reason why I liked doing it this way, with a very short GIF, is because this allows us to make it as big as we want, and we won't really have to worry about it loading solely, because this is only 3 megabytes. So let's just say, leave it at full. Let's, let's add like a nice dither. Let's add like a noise dither. I like noise dither. We also have, oh, what's it called? So that looks pretty good. All of the blending in her shoulders is really nice in the shadows. And that's a good place to look for what's happening to your color palette and your quality is what's going on in the parts of their body that's going to move like her hands, her mouth and parts of her facial features. You can also see what it looks like with diffusion which is okay. It's really just your choice of what looks good with the type of animation or video that you're exporting. Some of them will look better than others depending on what you're doing. And you also want to look down here at the bottom under GIF to see what it's doing to the size of the file. Because as you saw, as we added the dither, it increased our file size from 3 meg to 4.8 or 5. So it definitely can drastically change the size of your GIF if you're not careful, although it does make it look pretty good. The other ways that you can prevent this from being particularly slow loading or big is you can reduce the frame rate, you can delete some of the frames, all that stuff is a great way to improve your GIFs while not necessarily destroying the quality. So that looks pretty good. Uh, what do we want for selective color? Selective color is fine. This is just how it picks the colors and manages the colors, if it's restrictive color, all that stuff. 
Interlaced means that, that the image loads in separate uh, chunks, like it'll load one whole part of it, and it'll look kind of blurry, another whole part of it, start to get some detail, and then another. I don't always care to add this because this is a small GIF, it doesn't really matter. And then I think we're good, we can probably just export this. You can also add web snap so that it adheres to web save colors, but the web's pretty, pretty strong and sassy these days, so we'll just go with this for right now. And we'll click on save, and then let's just save this to, I don't know, let's put this into, just dump this in my footage folder as death by snoo snoo, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I just opened that up inside of Google Chrome, which seemed to play it the best. And it just says, it times snoo snoo, it plays pretty fast. And the only thing I would actually have to go back and tweak is I kind of messed up my timing for the text. So what I'd have to go back in here and do is I'd have to grab all these layers and move them back like this much to sync them up better with her lips moving. And then we'd have a good this time snoo snoo game. And if you really just want to convert videos into GIFs really quickly, you could probably just skip all this animation and adding different layers that you can merge together or clip together like inside of a video editor and just import the video into Photoshop, trim it, and then export it again. You could certainly do that. If you were going to do that, you can also find a lot of free tools on the internet like one of those GIF uploaders, like I think Giphy has a built-in editor that allows you to trim things and that might be a little bit more intuitive and helpful to you, but I like to use Photoshop for a wide variety of things. It's a really powerful program, so you can do stuff like make these animated videos with captions. You can edit some stuff, zip and zap and around. You can edit in that she starts to glow, grow angel wings, turn into a dragon, shoot lasers out of her belly button, pretty much anything that you want. So this is a, a brief little introduction to how you can create animated GIFs inside of Adobe Photoshop. I may get more in-depth on more of the advanced features, functions, and effects that you could potentially make using this program inside of videos and GIFs, along with sharing with you how the frame animation side of it works for if you were doing like frame-by-frame -frame keyframe animations if you wanted to become an animator. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. This has been another Photoshop tutorial. I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and toodles.